While Elon Musk tweets about making humanity multiplanetary, something extraordinary happened 350 million miles away that should command global attention. Picture this. Two rovers sit on the rusty Martian surface. One flies an American flag. The other, Chinese. But here's what the headlines missed. The Chinese rover wasn't just exploring. It was prospecting. In May 2021, as NASA celebrated Perseverance's first rock samples, China achieved something that should have sent shockwaves through every space agency on Earth. They landed on Mars on their very first attempt, a feat that took NASA four heartbreaking failures to achieve. The Zhurong rover didn't just land, it executed a ballet of physics so precise that planetary scientists called it doing in a single mission what NASA took decades to accomplish. But that's not the story. The real story is what China did next. According to their own published timeline, largely untranslated in Western media, they're not planning to visit Mars. They're planning to claim it. And they're already five years ahead of schedule. On May 14, 2021, while the world slept, China rewrote the rules of interplanetary exploration. Their Tianwen-1 mission didn't just land, it achieved the triple crown of Mars exploration in one shot, orbiting, landing, and roving. Imagine trying to hit a bullet with another bullet while blindfolded, then doing a backflip and sticking the landing. That's what China did, on their first try. The landing site reveals their true genius, Utopia Planitia, a name that sounds like science fiction but holds science fact. Zhurong's ground-penetrating radar peered two stories deep into the Martian crust and found something extraordinary. Sixteen polygon structures beneath the surface, the frozen signatures of ancient water. Not just drops, an ocean's worth, locked in permafrost, waiting. Think about water on Mars like oil in the 1850s Pennsylvania. Everyone knew it was there. But whoever figured out how to extract it first would reshape civilization. China's rover detected these water signatures along a 1,171-meter traverse. That's like finding an underground river system stretching from the Empire State Building to Central Park. Roberto Orose, the planetary scientist who discovered Mars's underground lakes, put it bluntly, China is doing in a single go what NASA took decades to do. This wasn't luck. This was preparation meeting opportunity at 125 million miles per hour. But the Western media's response? A polite golf clap. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson offered congratulations wrapped in diplomatic language. Major news networks gave it less coverage than a celebrity tweet. While we weren't watching, China had just demonstrated they could thread a needle from another planet. The real revelation came not from what Zhurong found, but from what China published next. A 30-year Mars development plan, complete with extraction zones and settlement patterns. They weren't just visiting Mars. They were drawing up the lease. Mars isn't just another celestial body, it's El Dorado floating in space, and China has the map. Imagine Earth's entire economy, every dollar and yuan ever created, compressed into rocks scattered across a planet nobody owns yet. That's Mars. The Tianwen-3 mission, launching in 2028, isn't hunting for abstract science, it's prospecting. Using three collection methods, surface scooping, drone-assisted gathering, and something unprecedented. Two-meter deep drilling. That's like the difference between panning for gold and strip mining. While NASA's rovers scratch the surface, China plans to dig deep enough to find what Mars is really hiding. Here's what makes your smartphone work. Rare Earth elements with names like dysprosium and neodymium China controls 90% of Earth's supply. Now imagine they control Mars's supply too. Every wind turbine, every electric car, every piece of advanced technology would flow through Beijing's fingers twice. Once from Earth, once from space. 
but the master stroke is water. Perxlorate deposits on Mars can be converted into rocket fuel. It's like finding a gas station in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Whoever controls Martian water doesn't just control Mars. They control every mission beyond it. Jupiter's moons, Saturn's rings, the asteroid belt's trillion-dollar rocks all require a pit stop at Mars. China's timeline reveals their urgency. They've accelerated Tianwen-3 by two years, aiming to return samples by 2031. Meanwhile, NASA's Mars Sample Return Mission has ballooned from $8 billion $11 billion, with no firm return date. It's like watching a chess grandmaster play against someone still learning the rules. The 2025 Tianwen-2 Mission to Asteroid 2016-H03 isn't a separate project. It's target practice. Learning to grab resources from a spinning rock prepares them for the ultimate prize. Chinese scientists have published a roadmap for an end-to-end -end space logistics system by 2100, with Mars as the central hub. They're not thinking in election cycles. They're thinking in centuries. Space law is built on a foundation of hope and handshakes. The 1967 Outer Space Treaty, signed when Mars was just a red dot in the telescope, says no nation can claim celestial bodies. But here's the trillion-dollar loophole. It says almost nothing about what private companies can do. China has been preparing for this ambiguity like a lawyer preparing for the case of the century. In 2023, they established 141 commercial aerospace companies. Commercial in name. State-backed in nature. It's like incorporating the Pacific Ocean. Technically legal. Practically imperial. Watch what China did in the South China Sea. They took submerged reefs, patches of ocean nobody thought twice about, and built them into military bases. Now they're airports, missile sites, sovereign territory in all but name. They created facts in the water that no treaty could wash away. Mars offers no water to muddy, just clear empty land waiting for the first flag. Article 12 of the Outer Space Treaty contains seven words that change everything. All stations, installations, equipment, and space vehicles. It assumes there will be buildings on other worlds. More critically, it suggests the owner can deny access. The first to build doesn't just get the land. They get to write the rules for everyone who comes after. The U.S. scrambled to respond. The 2015 Commercial Space Launch Competitiveness Act gave American companies rights to space resources. But rights on paper mean nothing without boots on regolith. China's approach is more elegant. Build first. Negotiate later. Possession isn't nine-tenths of the law in space. It's all of it. Chinese academic institutions have begun publishing frameworks for extraterrestrial governance models, suggesting administrative structures that mirror their successful economic zones on Earth, but 50 million miles away. While NASA begs Congress for funding, China has been building a cosmic coalition with the patience of a cathedral builder. The International Lunar Research Station, innocuous name, Revolutionary Implications, has attracted 11 nations and counting. Russia, Pakistan, the UAE, Venezuela, Belarus, Egypt. It reads like a list of countries frozen out of Western space programs, now offered a seat at the Martian table. Over 40 institutions worldwide have signed cooperation documents. That's not collaboration. That's building a parallel space establishment. China's offer is seductive in its simplicity. Free writing plus data sharing as CNSA officials put it. Translation, join us, and we'll share the universe. Think of it like the airline alliances that reshaped aviation. Star Alliance, one world. Except this alliance comes with mining rights to another planet. China offers developing nations something NASA can't. Mars colony slots in exchange for current Earth-based support. 
When the UN votes on space governance, China will have a dozen hands raising in unison. Russia brings more than nostalgia to this partnership. Despite the Ukraine war straining every other relationship, Putin signed into law cooperation on the ILRS project in June 2024. Russia's decades of keeping humans alive in space, the life support systems, the psychological protocols, the art of not dying in a tin can, all flow into China's Mars program. Chief designer Wu Wiren's goal crystallizes the ambition. Attract 500 international research institutions and 5,000 researchers by 2035. That's not a program. That's a new world order with Chinese characteristics. Every scientist who joins, every nation that signs on becomes invested in China's success. It's brilliant. It's terrifying. It's happening right now. The Artemis Accords, America's attempt at space coalition building, has 39 signatures. Impressive, until you realize most are traditional allies who would sign anyway. China's coalition pulls from the excluded, the ambitious, the hungry. They're not joining because they love China. They're joining because China is offering them Mars. Space isn't where China goes to escape Earth's problems. It's where they go to solve them. With a population aging faster than fine wine and an economy showing stress fractures, Mars offers Beijing something precious, a story of inevitable triumph that transcends earthly troubles. China's space budget tells the tale in numbers that make NASA executives weep. From $3 billion in 2020 to $19.5 billion in 2023, a six-fold increase while NASA's budget flatlined. That's not an investment. That's a declaration of intent written in rocket fuel. President Xi understands something fundamental. Space has huge public awareness and pride. It emboldens the Chinese people, gives them a strong sense of nationalism. While Americans argue about healthcare and Chinese citizens worry about property bubbles, both nations can look up and dream, but only one is turning those dreams into launch schedules. The military dimension lurks beneath every civilian announcement. The April 2024 reorganization of the People's Liberation Army wasn't subtle. It explicitly emphasized strengthening China's military presence in space. Every life support system that keeps a Mars colonist breathing could keep a submarine crew alive. Every communication relay that talks to Mars could coordinate satellites over Taiwan. China's 25-year plan to become the world's leading space power by 2050 isn't a wish list. It's a procurement schedule. They're pursuing answers to humanity's biggest questions. Dark matter. Dark energy. The origins of the universe. Extraterrestrial life. Whoever answers these questions first doesn't just win Nobel Prizes. They win civilizational authority. The moon serves as Mars's dress rehearsal, three-day trips to test technologies for three-year missions. Every gram of lunar regolith processed, every solar panel deployed in lunar dust, every problem solved in one-sixth gravity prepares them for one-third gravity on Mars. NASA talks about returning to the moon. China never left. They just moved their rehearsals from Earth to space. Time is the resource nobody can mine. And China is spending it better than anyone else. Their published timeline reads like a countdown to Western irrelevance. Chen Wen 3 launches in 2028. Return samples by 2031. Crude landing by 2033. Permanent base by 2035. Each date isn't a target. It's a promise backed by treasury funds and political will. NASA's timeline reads like a prayer to the budget gods. Mars landing by 2039. If Artemis succeeds, if Congress funds it, if SpaceX delivers, if nothing goes wrong, that's not a plan. That's a hope wrapped in a PowerPoint presentation. 
The independent assessment is even bleaker. NASA needed to choose their Mars architecture and begin development in 2024 to meet a 2039 landing. That deadline whooshed by like a missed launch window. Between 2028 and 2035, China will deploy 15 major space science missions. Not proposals. Funded, approved, building right now missions. While NASA debates whether to send four astronauts or six, China has already begun training colonists in Gobi Desert facilities that simulate Martian conditions down to the atmospheric pressure. The advantage of authoritarian planning versus democratic deliberation has never been starker. NASA must justify every bolt to a Congress that changes every two years. China's space program answers to a party planning for 2049, the centennial of the People's Republic. They don't think in fiscal years. They think in dynasties. Space News captured the disparity in one damning sentence. While China charges ahead, NASA's Mars sample return mission restructured after costs ballooned from $8 billion to $11 billion. It's like watching someone rebuild their engine while their competitor speeds past the checkered flag. The untranslated Chinese documents contain a phrase that should chill every Western strategist. The universe is an ocean. Mars is Huangyan Island. If we don't go there now, even though we are capable, then we will be blamed by our descendants. Huangyan Island, known as Scarborough Shoal, is the reef China seized from the Philippines in 2012. They see Mars not as humanity's second home, but as territory to be claimed before others arrive. We stand at a pivot point where science fiction becomes geopolitical fact. Mars has transformed from humanity's backup planet to the next arena of great power competition, where the stakes aren't just scientific prestige, but the economic and political architecture of the next thousand years. The evidence builds like gravity itself, inexorable and undeniable. China has the technology, demonstrated by Zhu Rong's successful landing. They have the funding, $19.5 billion and climbing. They have the political will, a multi-decade plan immune to election cycles. They have the coalition, dozens of nations and hundreds of institutions betting on Beijing's vision. Most critically, they have urgency. Between 2036 and 2050, China aims to achieve revolutionary breakthroughs that establish them as the dominant space power. Mars isn't a destination in this plan. It's the foundation. Control Mars. Control the outer solar system. Control the outer solar system. Control humanity's future. The question has evolved from whether China will establish a presence on Mars to whether anyone else will arrive in time to ensure the red planet reflects humanity's diversity rather than a single nation's dominance. Will Mars become humanity's second home or China's first colony? As that Chinese space official warned, those who fail to act when capable will be blamed by their descendants. The red planet may soon have more than just a red flag planted on its surface. The cosmos doesn't care about our politics, but our politics will determine who writes the next chapter of cosmic history. The launch windows to Mars don't wait for budget approvals or election results. They come every 26 months, and China hasn't missed one yet. The real question isn't whether we're in a new space race. It's whether anyone besides China knows the race has already started. If you enjoyed this story, hit subscribe for more stories where history, technology, and human ambition collide. Thanks for watching.